Hello, welcome to today's tutorial. I'm Mr. David Yakot. I hope you're gonna enjoy this video. Now, uh, today we are going to design a universal steel column as per this question. Let's read a 203 by 203 by 52 kilogram per meter universal column of grade S275 steel and effective length 4.2 meter carries a factored axial load of 800 kilonewton. Check the adequacy of the column. Step number one, we'll have to obtain the relevant properties of this column section that we shall use to check its adequacy. This is how we proceed. I'll come here and show you. One of the property we need is the area of the section. I will show you in the table, we have area of the section, we have thickness of ledge, we have thickness of web, we have the ratio B over T, ratio D over T, we have radius of gyration along X, which is RXX, and radius of gyration along Y, which is given as RYY. Here it is, our section was, so you come here, now, look at the titles, it's section designation. So under section designation, we locate our section. Our section is the last section we can see, 203, 203 by 52. It is found on the extreme right hand side. So the properties we've been talking about, for example, Look at thickness, we have web and flange. Web is small t. When you look at it, you get it is 7.9 and flange is 12.5. That is how we read these values. And then let me scroll a bit. Radius of gyration. You see we have along axis xx and axis yy. That is where we get rxx and ryy, provided you read along your section. Then the area of section is here. This is the area of section A. Like for our case, you find it is 66.3 centimeters square. One thing I want to advise you is to begin. This table has different value. You find area is given in terms of centimeters squared. But if you go to thickness of flange and web is given in millimeters. So when you obtain the value from the table, ensure you carry with its correct value so that during calculation, you can be able to convert into uniform values in the parameters you are looking at. That is how we obtain, I've said, you move along 203 by 203 by 52 column and obtain along that column, all the properties that are required. That is the approach we used to get this value we have here. So these are the value. Now, after that, design steel strength, which is PY, is equivalent to 275 neutral per millimeter squared. Why? Because in the equation we are told it is S275. And another reason is because the thickness of flange capital T is below 16 millimeter. So if it's below 16, the PY will be 275 neutral per millimeter squared. And then we calculate the epsilon naught, which is given by the square root of 275 divided by the design strength, which is PY. Our case PY is 275. Square root of 275 over 275 is one. We moved effective length, that one we are given in the question as 4.2 meter, which is 4,200 millimeter. From there, we check for local buckling. For local buckling, we look at ratio B over T and ratio D over T. The B over T ratio from the table is 8.17 and the limiting value is less or equal to 15 epsilon naught. And you find that our B over T ratio is below that, which means our flange is class one plastic. Our D over T was 20.4 and the limiting is 40 epsilon naught. This means our web is not slender. If our web is not slender, we conclude and say our column is not slender. The reason why we have to categorize and uh, take this ratio is because each category comes with its formula for compressive strength. Now, because of the findings of our check, we can now say compressive strength 
capital PC is equivalent to PC times gross area of the section. Remember this PC obtained from the table as intersection of slenderness ratio and the design steel strength PY. Let's proceed. Now, this is how we calculate slenderness ratio. They are here, there are two of them. We have a log XX and a log YY. Now, to get lambda XX, slenderness ratio along X axis, you take effective length, you divide by radius of gyration along the X axis, RXX, which is 4200 over 89.1. Remember, 8.91 was centimeter, so we convert to millimeter 89.1. Radius of gyration along YY, you get it as 81.08. Now, for you to calculate PC, we normally pick the highest or the largest slenderness ratio because the largest slenderness ratio will give us the lowest strength. In design, when you are designing, you normally consider a member that has less strength because if that member can sustain the loading, then the other members of higher strength will not fail. That is why you go for the member, the weakest member, the most disadvantaged member. Now, for we to obtain the value of PC, we look at the intersection of lambda, slenderness ratio, and design strength, PY, in the curve, strut curve 24C. Now let's proceed. I want us to obtain the value of PC at the intersection of slenderness ratio 81.08 and PY 275. This is how we proceed. So we'll come here. So looking at this table, the first column slenderness ratio then the second part, we have S275. S275 is where we have our PY. But in S275, we have 235, 245, 255, 265, and 275. Remember, our PY is 275. Now, we locate the point of intersection between 81.08 and 275. When you look at our table here, we cannot get 81.08. We only have... 80 and 82. Now what we'll do, we'll take intersection between 80 and 275, which is 161, and then intersection between 82 and 275, which is 157. From there, by interpolation, we'll be able to obtain the value of PC at 81.08. This is how we proceed. We come here and say this intersection at 80 it is 161 and 82 is 157. So you look at the higher the slenderness ratio, the lower the strength, the PC. Now by interpolation, we'll say PC at 81.08 is basically PC at 80 minus the difference from 80 to 81.08 is 1.08 divided by from 80 to 82 is two units times four. This four is the difference in strength at one, at 80 and 82. So you find our value at 81.08 will be 158.84 Newton per millimeter squared. Now from there we can now compute compressive strength capital C, which will be PC obtained from the table multiplied by the cross-sectional area of our section, which is 158.84. We multiply by 6630 millimeters squared, then it times 10 to the power negative three to change it to kilo newton. Now, since our compressive strength, what the section can carry is 1053 and the applied load is 800, we say the column is adequate because it can carry 1,000 and is being subjected to 800. Thank you very much for watching this video. I request you to subscribe, like, and share my channel. See you next time. Goodbye.